My name is Bob G, and I'm Vice Chairman of the Committee 100, and I want to welcome you as well as our viewing audience to a discussion entitled Powering Growth, China's Alternative Energy Sector. And as, we, as most Americans know at this point, China has had a very large uh, surge of economic growth. It has experienced over the last four years an annual growth rate in excess of 10 percent. Just recently, numbers announced for this quarter show that they're growing at a rate of 11.1 percent as contrasted with the previous quarter. The effects of this are dramatic in terms of the demand for power as well as its implications for the global economy. Specifically, China will need or it has needed an enormous amount of energy to fuel its economic boom. Specifically, it relies a great deal on coal to generate the electric power it needs. It's building coal plants at the rate of around one gigawatt per week as we speak. The implications of this are enormous. Previously, the International Energy Agency had estimated by the year 2010, China would surpass the United States in overall greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, the IEA just came out with a new number yesterday, which said, in fact, that China will surpass the United States by this year because of its economic growth. Unchecked over the next 25 years, China will produce twice the amount of global greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions than the collective countries of the organization of, of uh, the OECD countries, the Organization for Economic Co Cooperation and Development, which as you know includes Europe, the United States, Canada, South Korea, and Japan. At the same time, China has undertaken measures to improve energy efficiency. It has targeted a 20 percent uh, uh, goal of achieving new energy efficiency over the next several years. It missed its target this year. Also, it's looking for alternatives beyond coal-fired generation to meet its energy demand. In, 19, in 2005, it enacted a renewable energy law, which took effect in early 2006, that has as its goal uh, 15 percent of all uh, energy coming from renewable sources in China by 2020. Whether this would be enough to stave off or blunt the effects of greenhouse gas emissions in China remains to be seen. But we have an expert panel put together today that will address that as well as other issues with respect to the potential for alternative energy in China. I'm pleased to introduce our guests for today. We have to my right, my far right, Paul Hanrahan. Paul Hanrahan is President and Chief Executive Officer of the AES Corporation, a position he's held since June 2002. Prior to that, he was the head of AES's business unit in China and spent a number of years in China as a representative of AES that was a pioneer power company in China. AES is a global company, one of the world's largest power developers in the world. They also have made a commitment for $1 billion in alternative energy investments, and part of that investment portfolio will include China. To Paul's left is Dr. Xu Jin Rong. Dr. Xu is founder and CEO of SunTech Power, a company he founded in 2001, which specializes in the manufacturing of silicon solar cells, modules and, modules and systems. Under his leadership, SunTech has grown at a phenomenal rate. Uh, according to Photon International, in 2005, SunTech's silicon solar cell production volume was ranked 10th in the world. In 2005, SunTech had a successful initial public offering through the New York Stock Exchange, and the company raised one of the largest amount of funds among Chinese companies in the New York Stock Exchange. Dr. Shear also, I am informed, according to For Fortune magazine, is the seventh wealthiest person living in China today. And I'm sure he could, I don't know if that's true, but I'm sure that he's been told that many, many times. <laughs> we'll find out. I'm also pleased to introduce our moderator for today. And we're very, very pleased that he, uh, and delighted that he could find the time to lead a discussion of this, of this expert panel. Tom Friedman has been with the New York Times since 1991 in various capacities both as a financial reporter, as chief diplomatic, chief White House, and international economics correspondent, and currently serves as a foreign affairs col columnist for that newspaper. 
He has won the Pulitzer Prize not once, but three times, including the 2002 Pulitzer Prize for Distinguished Commentary for his clarity of vision in commenting on the worldwide impact of the terrorist threat. He is also a prolific author, and his most recent work, as many of you know, is the book, The World is Flat, A Brief History of the 21st Century, which received the inaugural Goldman Sachs Financial Times Business Book of the Year Award. And at this time, please join me in welcoming our panel and our moderator, Tom Friedman. Thanks so much. Uh, well, it's a treat to be here this afternoon. Some of you um, know I uh, have a banged up foot. No, I didn't get it stuck in my mouth. Um, I don't like <laughs> any jokes about that um, during the Q&A. Um, being here this afternoon, I get a million invitations, was an easy call. Um, uh, it's a pleasure, first of all, to be able to meet Paul Hanrahan and, and to hear about AES. Um, but um, the chance um, to reconnect uh, with my friend, Dr. Xu, who uh, hosted me in Shanghai um, in his office, and uh, we got to do an interview there, was, was uh, way too much, uh, way too tempting to overlook. And uh, I'm a total sucker for the Group of 100. Um, who uh, honored me a couple of years ago in San Francisco, and it's really a treat and an honor to be back here with you all. Uh, you do so many good things and, uh, for Chinese-American relations, and so it's a, it's a treat to be here. Um, Dr. Shou, I want to start with you. Um, how did a nice boy from Wuxi end up in the solar business? Um, uh, tell us just a little bit about your background. I think people would be very interested in how you ended up in the solar business. Okay. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, it's very interesting, you know, like I, you know, I was uh, a student, okay, um, working in laser physics area, and in 1988, I went to Australia, and by a chance, in 1989, I knocked a, knock a door of a professor, you know, Professor Martin Green. Later, he was my PhD supervisor. Mm. That's how I, you know, get into this solar area. I never thought, you know, I had been always, uh, uh, you know, working in solar research, so writing papers, that's all I you know, aim at. But I never thought solar actually can be commercialized, mm. can really do something good for, for human being. Mm. So solar is the only thing I knew. So and uh, in 1995, I realized, you know, especially in Europe, so this solar market start to, to move up. Mm. So then, and, uh, you know, I monitor the progress, about the year 2000, you know, my job in Australia it was not as challenging as in the, in the beginning. Mm. So, plus my friend in China, hey, Dr. Xi, you have technology, you should come back. Mm. So then, is that true? So I spent two weeks tooling in, in China. Mm. I found things really, infrastructure, at least superficially, is a big change. Mm. So then I decided, you know, to, to move back, you know, with initially seeding fund mainly from, you know, Wuxi local state-owned uh, government, uh, state-owned uh, uh, companies. Mm -hmm. So start with six million US dollars. Mm -hmm. I put in half million myself, mm -hmm. that's all I have, oh. okay? So to start this business, and I think it's really the good timing because, um, you know, the, the growth or success of Suntec really reflected the demand of, you know, human being for this uh, green energy. What was the... Going back to that start, yes. what was the idea you had that nobody else had at the time or that was sure, unique sure. in China that allowed you to take off? Well, I think it's maybe partially because of my, my education in the West. And, um, and I think uh, you know, I understand uh, both Western culture and uh, uh, Eastern culture. So combination of both mm -hmm. you know, together, plus my understanding in, in the industry. Yeah. So, I thought, um, because before, you know, I went back, there were already five companies, you know, they're struggling. Interesting. They have been, you know, working on this for Throughout five. Throughout China. There yeah, were five yes. solar players. Exactly. They have been working on it for more than 10 years. They're, mm. they're, they're struggling. Mm. So I think partially there's a lack of understanding of technology and, uh, you know, not enough information. Mm. So I remember very clearly, you know, when I decided to come back, we have, uh, you know, American friends. You know, he also, uh, you know, I, I think now he's in, in, in Unreal. He said, why, if he go back, it would be big fish jumping in a small pond. Huh. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Yeah. So, 
So that's because my understanding of the technology and also connections in this uh, you know, industry, in this community. So I really you know, feel very confident that we can do something. So it proves that I was right. Terrific. Terrific. <laughs>